Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to modify and customize the SVG cut files that you upload to Cricut Design Space. So welcome to the third video in my SVGs Made Simple series. I'm Jennifer, the designer at the jennifermaker.com blog and channel and founder of the Cut Above SVG design course. Today I'm going to show you how to modify the SVGs that you upload to Cricut Design Space. You're going to learn how to fix up the files so they're ready to cut, how to modify and personalize the designs just for you, and how to group and ungroup, attach and change cut lines to score lines or write lines. Once you can do this, you will have the key to using SVGs to create amazing projects. <laughs> so if you're struggling with this, as I know many of you are, this will erase that feeling of frustration and you'll be making beautiful things from SVGs before you know it. So just to recap, in video one, I taught you how to find super cool SVG files and how to download them and where to find the files once they were downloaded. In video two, I showed you how to actually use those files to make things by uploading the file to your design software using a Mac, a PC, or even an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android. And now I'm going to show you how to prepare those files for cutting, how to modify them, and how to personalize them to your needs. Are you ready? Let's do this. How to prepare SVG files in Cricut Design Space for desktop. Now let me show you how to make your SVGs in Cricut Design Space really work for you. What you see here is my Cricut Design Space application open with my OWL shadow box card loaded, exactly as it appears right after uploading it and placing it on the canvas. The canvas is this big open area in the middle with all of the grid lines. Remember, if you're not sure how to upload files to Cricut Design Space, review the previous lesson and video in this training series. And here's a tip. You could modify the grid lines on the canvas by clicking in the empty white box at the top left corner where the rulers meet, right here. I like to keep my grid turned on, but here's what it looks like when you click it. So. If you click it once, the grid goes away, click it again, you get a larger grid, then click it a third time and it goes back to the smaller grid. It's important to understand that most SVG cut files are not ready to go as soon as you upload them, unless they're very simple. Most need some preparation in order to get the results that you really want. Instructions and tutorials for the file may be available. I always try to have a video that shows you what to do for my designs. But if you're not familiar with these concepts, it can be confusing. To help you understand, I'm going to walk you through the big prep tasks that you need to do with uploaded SVGs. That's modifying layers and ungrouping and attaching. And then I'll show you how to modify and customize any SVG. So let me show you how to do this on my OWL shadow box card um, in Cricut Design Space for Desktop. How to modify layers in Cricut Design Space for Desktop. All SVG cut files have at least one layer, usually more than that. You can view the layers in the layer panel on the right side of the Cricut Design Space screen right here. You can click each layer in the panel and it will highlight and select it on your screen. Each line item in your layers panel shows several important things. First, a thumbnail of the layer itself, so you can see a general shape. Number two, it'll show a, the layer color, which is indicated by the thumbnail's color. So for example, this layer right here, this is green, right? So it's green on our canvas and it's green in our layers panel. Third, it shows the layers visibility. It is either visible or hidden. To view the layers operation, you will need to click on that specific layer and view the operation in the top menu. By default, all layers will come in with the basic cut attribute selected. However, not all layers are intended to be cut. This particular project, like many of the SVGs that I create, has score lines to help you fold the project after it is cut. To get score lines, you have to tell Cricut Design Space that you want these lines to be scored rather than cut. 
To do this, you will select the score lines layer in the layers panel. You can identify these score lines by seeing the layers that don't have any color or thumbnail. These layers have no color because they're simply just lines. Click on that layer and change the operation in the operation menu from basic cut to score. You're going to do this for each of the score lines in this design. In this design, there are four of these score layers, all indicated by the thumbnails that show empty boxes or simply lines. Great! Now our score lines are designated as scores rather than basic cuts. If you have a scoring stylus or scoring tool in your Cricut, it will score these lines instead of cut them. However, we still need to attach the score lines to their base layer so that you know which layers need to be scored. I will explain that later. Now you can modify layers in other ways too, of course. If you click the thumbnail and then click the color box near the top of the screen, you can change the color. Note that the material colors at the top of the screen shows you what colors you already have for this project right here. So if you want to choose one of those, you can just click on one of those, or you can pick an entirely different one below. Let's just change it to yellow from the materials color at the top for now. You could even click advanced to choose a custom color just like this. You can also make a layer invisible or hidden by clicking the eye icon in the layers panel. A hidden layer, which is indicated by the eye icon with a line through it, will not show on your canvas and it will not cut out, but it does stay in your design if you later change your mind and want to show it again. And here's an important tip. You can undo any action that you take in Cricut Design Space with the undo icon in the top left corner of your screen. You can also undo with your keyboard if you'd prefer. Just press Ctrl Z on Windows or Command Z on Mac. You can also redo things with the redo icon beside the undo icon in the corner or just press Control shift z on Windows or Command-Shift-Z on Mac to use your keyboard. And there's more you can do with layers too. How to ungroup and attach layers in Cricut Design Space for desktop. One important thing you can do and should understand how to do is grouping, ungrouping, and attaching layers. Let's look more closely at the layers of the Owl Shadow Box card. At the top of the layers panel on the right, note that there is a small black arrow pointing downward with items indented below it. This black arrow indicates that there is a group in this design and the layers indented below it are grouped together. If you click the arrow icon, it will collapse the group so you can see what it contains. In this case, everything in this file is grouped, which is very normal. Click it again to see all the items in the group again. Group only affects what you see or not see in your layers panel. It doesn't change the visibility or whether or not Cricut Design Space will cut things, just so you know. Before we can change anything about how these layers are attached together, however, or really have good control over these layers, we do need to ungroup them. So to ungroup things, you want to select the group in the layers panel and then click the ungroup icon at the very top of the layers panel right here. You'll now see that the big group has been disbanded, but we still have a bunch of black arrows. Those black arrows indicate the subgroups that were in this group. So this is important to note. Some files, especially more complex ones like this one, have more than one grouping. You can always ungroup any group if you need to. In this case, however, we don't need to ungroup these subgroups. They were set up on purpose so that the score lines were grouped with the base layer that they belong to. I did this when I designed it. This is important because it's now necessary to attach the score line layers to the appropriate base layers. And by now, you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between grouping and attaching? Now, I got to get real with you here. 
This idea of grouping and attaching was hard to wrap my head around at first. In judging from all of the emails I get and the comments that I see on Facebook, it's hard for you too. At this point, I have a really good grasp on it, so let me try to explain the difference. Grouping is just a way to indicate layers that belong to one another here on the canvas. Those layers may be anywhere on the canvas. They are together, but not fixed in place together. Attaching, on the other hand, keeps those layers physically together when you go to cut the file. So they aren't just together, they are also linked by position. Think of it this way. Grouping is like taking a walk in a park with someone you love. You might walk a little faster or a little slower at times. Someone might stop to talk to a friend. Someone might stop to pet a dog. But otherwise, you're together. You'll arrive and leave at the same time. Attaching, on the other hand, is like holding hands while you're taking that walk. You have to walk at the same pace and stay together when you're holding hands, right? One doesn't go anywhere without the other. This is important because we need to get our score lines and our base layer cut lines to hold hands. We need to attach them. Thankfully, this is also pretty easy. Just select the two layers that you want to attach to one another. You can select more than one layer at a time by holding down the shift key as you click subsequent layers. Then click the Attach button at the bottom of the Layers panel. When the attachment is successful, the word Attach appears above the layers to indicate that they are now attached together. You'll want to attach all of the layers that have score lines to their cut lines, just like this. So in this design, there are four total score lines that need to be attached to their respective base layers. You may notice that our design now looks different than it did before, but it's really just that the layers are in a different order. The last layers that we attached are now the front layer. We can change the way the layers are arranged on our canvas by going to the Arrange menu at the top of the screen. For example, we can choose Send to Back while this yellow layer is selected, and it will go all the way to the back. See how it changed? Feel free to rearrange your layers on your canvas. Just know that this only affects how you see them on your canvas, not your actual cutting order. Now, something that trips people up is when they cannot attach two layers. This is pretty much always because of an existing group. If you ungroup layers and keep ungrouping until all the groups are gone, you can always attach two layers together. Next time you have an issue with attaching, make sure you've ungrouped everything and then try to attach the layers. Okay, now that we've modified the layers from basic cut to score and attached the layers with the score lines to the appropriate base layers, let's save this project. Just click the save link up in the top right corner and give it a good name. You can also choose to put it into one of your collections to organize it. Click on New Collections to make a new one if you need it. When you're ready, click Save. Now this project is in your Cricut Cloud and can be accessed anytime you open Cricut Design Space, regardless of where you are or what device you're using. And this file is now ready for cutting. Just click that Make It button in the upper right corner and you're good to go. How to customize layers in Cricut Design Space for Desktop. Now you'll notice that there are a lot more buttons and controls in Design Space than I've mentioned. Many of these you don't need to worry about if you're just uploading and preparing SVG files, but you can use them if you want to customize the SVG. So let me show you a few things that you can do. If you want to resize your SVG, First, make sure everything is selected with the Select All button at the top. Now select any of the corner boxes that appear. I'm going to select the bottom right-hand corner box. These boxes will enable you to drag and resize the image. A handy measurement will appear at the bottom of the design to show you the size as you move the box. To rotate the image, click on the image so that the resizing handle boxes appear. 
Then hover your mouse just outside of one of those corner boxes until a curved double-sided arrow appears. Hold down your mouse button and then you can rotate in either direction. You can also rotate the image by using the rotate field in the top menu. Note that the measurement shows the combined size of all of the objects selected. So if you have extra items beyond the finished project, as I do here with the leaves at the bottom, you'll want to use the rulers and grid lines to tell you how big something is instead. For example, right now I've sized the owl shadow box to be seven inches high because I can see that there are seven inches from the top edge of the card to the bottom edge of the card, thanks to my ruler and my grid lines. And a note about resizing. Most designers, like myself, intend for something to be cut at a certain size. If you go too small, you may find it hard to cut out the fine details. And if you go too big, it may not fit on your machine mat. Just keep this in mind. You can also flip a design horizontally if you want it to be a mirror image, just like this with the flip button here. So just choose flip at the top of your screen and then choose flip horizontally. You can flip vertically if you want to. Something else you can do is change the design itself with special tools like Slice, Weld, and Flatten. For example, let's take just the owl layer out and look at it. I will hide all of the others. And then I'll zoom in so I can see it a little better. So let's say I didn't want these glowing eyes. I mean, that's not very realistic, right? So to get rid of the eyes altogether, you just want to click on the owl layer and then click the contour button in the lower right corner of the window. Now you can see each individual element that's in this design. Zoom in a bit if you're having issues seeing things well, and then you can click the eyes to hide them. Close the window and they'll disappear in your design. Isn't that awesome? But what if you wanted to put some hearts on this owl? I love owls, I love hearts. So to add heart eyes, click the shapes icon on the left, choose a heart, resize it to what you want, and position it where you want it on your owl. Now select both the heart and the owl layer in your layers panel by holding down the shift key as you click both layers, and then click the slice button. Now, if you ever have issues using the slice tool, be sure you've selected two layers and only two layers. Slice won't work if you don't have two layers selected, of course, nor will it work if you have more than two layers selected. So this is really important. So let's click slice. And now the owl has a heart. You'll note that there are now some extra layers in your layers panel called slice results. These are the bits that you sliced out. You can hide or delete them. You can also use one of them to create the other heart eye. Just move the sliced out heart to the other side of the owl's head. Hold down the shift key, select the owl layer, and then click slice again. And then get rid of all the extra sliced results that you don't need, unless you actually want to cut them out too. Finally, what if you wanted to change more about this design? What if you, say, wanted the moon to be in a different face? You can do this too. Just click shapes on the left, select the circle, make the circle about the same size as the moon, and then position it so it looks like the moon isn't quite full. I'm gonna hold down my shift key to select both layers, and then I'm gonna weld them together. To do this, you're going to select the combine option in the bottom menu, and then click weld. This is going to permanently fuse these two layers together. And there we go. Now the moon is in a different phase. Isn't that cool? Imagine all of the changes you can make to all of the designs you find now. Now, weld is permanent. You can undo immediately if you don't like it, but once you save and close this design and then open it again, you will not be able to unweld. So use weld only when you feel confident about your change. So as you can see, there's really a lot that you can do to modify SVG cut files in Cricut Design Space. Of course, 
You get way more control when you just design the SVG yourself and make it precisely the way you want from the start. That's just my opinion though. I can teach you how to design SVGs yourself in my Cut Above course. So there you go. Lots and lots of ways to prepare and modify your SVG cut files before you ever cut them out. And don't forget, anytime you make a change to any of your files, be sure to save your work. Okay, so now that you know how to use SVGs in Cricut Design Space, you can cut them and you can make them. And at this point, you may be wondering, how those SVGs get made in the very first place. I mean, they are really cool, but wouldn't it be even better if you could make those designs yourself, making them exactly the way you want without any compromise? It's possible and you can do it. I've taught myself how to create SVG files, and once I knew how to design amazing things, I began sharing them on my jennifermaker.com site and channel. And Oh my goodness, it has been such an amazing experience to turn all of those ideas in my head into real projects. And then to go and share what I made with others who can also make it. I have met so many amazing people through my designs and I've made my house into a real home with all the things that I've made. And I can teach you exactly how to create this same joy and how to create your own designs too. I've created something special. It's called the Cut Above SVG Design Course. And in it, I can show you how to do what I do, how to make personalized projects that you can upload, share, and even sell. I can teach you how to create exactly the design that you want. And I can teach you how to do this whether you're on a Mac or a PC, whether you want to use Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. All you need is a personal computer, some extra space on your hard drive, maybe a mouse, I recommend a mouse, <laughs> and your imagination. Enrollment in my course is limited, so my team and I can offer personal assistance to all of our students. The course is divided into eight sections, with one section offered per week, but it's also completely on demand and self-paced. And if you want to enroll, be sure to set a reminder so you don't miss out, because it is a limited time enrollment. Now, before we go today, I want you to leave a comment right below this video and ask me anything about using SVGs. Feel free to ask me anything about Cut Above as well. I'm always happy to answer all the questions. So in the next video, I'll answer whatever questions you have for me and tell you how you can design your own SVG cut files to use, share, and sell. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.